Hi and welcome to Interbase Labs and this introduction to IB Console. IB Console is installed on Windows with Interbase and if we go to our Interbase install we can see we have the IB Console application. It's located in the bin directory. Now within IB Console we have a nice GUI interface into some of the really cool things that we can do with Interbase. So firstly we have a list of servers and we can add, remove, log in, diagnose connections and so on. So we've already added in a local host here and if we right click on this we can have a look at the properties of the server. Uh, we can see the port alias that it's running on. We can This is used if we have multiple instances. We can see our network protocol that we're using to connect across to it and the name and also an alias so uh, an alias is not the actual computer's network name it's a name that you use to remember it easily once we have got our server registered we'll be able to see there's two different types of server icons there's a little green dot to show that the server's live and interbase IB console can see it and we have a red dot which means that IB console can't actually connect across to that computer at the moment. Now if we right click on it we can refresh the server status to update if we can actually see that or not. There's also when you go and log in and here we're using our standard username and password you can see it will give a green tick to say you're connected through once you're connected, you can then have a look at additional features of the server, such as users. You can add, modify, and delete users here. You can have a look at the server log. You can run backups and restores from here. And most importantly, you can register new databases. So now we have a server registered. If we go here, we can add a database or create a database or perform the maintenance tasks. So if we choose the create database then we can go through the creating database steps and so on. Um, however we're just going to log into a database that we've already added here, the employee database. And once we're connected we can see we can disconnect, we can do additional database maintenance, we can copy the database, we can open up performance monitoring, we can view the metadata. Uh, viewing the metadata gives us a script in essence for recreating this database structure into a blank database. So you really can learn by example with um, viewing the metadata of a database. We also have tools in here for opening up uh, the interactive SQL window. Um, there's a shortcut for that here as well. So we can open up an SQL window and from here we're able to um, write in a, an SQL statement. So for example, select star from sales and we can return back the sales data. Um, let's have a look at trying to do that in another way. So we could say select, and if we choose the sales, we could choose some fields. And with the ship date, we could actually use kind of um, some functions. So let's extract the year from the shipping date and maybe let's do another function extract the um, let's do the, the day from the order date from sales so we're able to kind of use the um, defined functions um, quite quickly and easily and pick up on the kind of feature-rich uh, language that is within the, uh, the, 
the interface SQL syntax. We can also go ahead and try and update data from here. So let's say um, delete from sales. And we can execute that. And if we um, use this previous and next, we can move back through different queries we've run. Now if we execute this statement again, we can see we've deleted everything from the table, so nothing's there. Now, if that was a mistake, then we have a rollback option here to roll back the current transaction because we've not committed yet. We're able to roll back. So if we roll back and let's go and run this query again, we can see our data is back. Phew! Saved a few hours data entry. So that's all pretty good from here. So let's jump back to the IB console. We can also see here we can look at the domains and we won't go through each of these here but literally going through each of these different types of options here um, typically you can double click on the item that's in the list and from there you're able to view enhanced properties um, so for example here we can see the properties of this is a decimal um, 12 comma 2 that there's a range check that the value is greater than 10,000 and the value is less than 200, uh, so 2 million. We can have a look at the metadata for that. We can view any dependencies that are there. We can also go ahead and create a new item. We can alter the selected item. So in here we can change the budget domain. We could change its type. We could change its position uh, and so on. And there's so you know, there's quite a lot you can do with with IB Console in the different areas. So if we go and have a look at tables, um, we can see we've got more options along here. We can go into the table editor. We can assign primary keys, unique keys, foreign keys, check constraints, and so on. And we can also add in new fields with specific domains. Um, so we can say we're going to add a budget field called. Um, budget. Um, we could also specify it as a specific type if we wanted to not use a domain. We can also do computed by, so you could have a computed field which is something plus something else to give you a computed field. So for example, uh, if you have first name, last name, then you might use a computed name to give you full name. So that's, uh, that's a quick introduction to IB Console. Obviously, we have help in here as well. So if you wanted to find out uh, anything more, then you can see what's new in the different versions. You can work your way through different uh, uh, elements of the, the program with the, the help that is fully online and, and in here. So thank you for watching, and see you back next time.